garden has some beautiful focal points, and one of them, of course, is these major water features. On either side, flanked on either side of the garden, really is a great welcoming influence into the garden. So if you're wanting to put a water feature like this in your garden, how do you go about it? You know what? It's dead simple. This is how it goes. You're going to buy a cool bowl just like this. Make sure that it's been waterproofed, or you waterproof it yourself. You're going to have the pump inside of it. Remember to drill a hole around the edge over here so that your electrical cable can go through. If you don't do that, well, you end up with the electrical cable just hanging off the edge and ah, oh, it just looks really awful. And then you can choose to have something like this, this bubble water feature in the middle of it. If, however, you live in a windy area, I suggest strongly that you don't do that because take a look at this. You see that? So if you get lots of wind, well, you're going to lose all the water in your water feature and end up burning out the pump. Not a cool idea. So if that's the case, then rather take this fitting off and just simply let it bubble. And that way, you're going to have no water leaving your water feature. But this is really simple to do, dead easy. Anyone can do it. You know, there's a thing about rockeries. They either work or they don't work. And I'm afraid to say that nine times out of 10, it's almost like the rocks were thrown out of the sky, they landed in the middle of the garden, and well, let's plant a few plants around them. The good news is that this one works. So let's show you why. Well, the rocks have been placed the right way because rocks have a back and a front, just like we do. So here's the front of the rock. You can see how it's been laid so that you're working with the right contours. If this rock had to get stood up like this, it just wouldn't work. It wouldn't look right. So work with rocks, work with their natural contours. And then of course, it's about the height. Behind me, this awesome pot as the focal point to get a bit of height. Instead of planting a tree, well, put a tall pot there. I mean, if you've got a small garden and you need some height, this is the way to go. And then the planting, some lovely daisies, love the full sun, we've got a cycad, Aloe's in the background, and of course, the gorgeous aloe ferox right at the top to give you that extra height that you require. The good news as well that you can get aloe ferox relatively inexpensively from your local garden center looking that size already. So it's all about combinations. A bit of color, some agapanthus, a lovely cycad and the aloes for that great focal point. And of course, yes, you got it. It's all about using these jolly old rocks in the right way. The cool thing about this garden is that you could literally pick it up and put it anywhere. Think about it. You've got balance on the left and the right. You've got that wonderful paving in the center that is really urging you to walk through the garden because it is stepped. And that step creates a bit of interest and intrigue within the garden. So it could be maybe the front entrance to a home. It could be leading you into a whole new section of the garden, maybe with the pool and the beyond or down into a pathway that's gonna send you to a complete new section. This garden is incredibly versatile and taken like this, use this inspiration, wow, you could use it anywhere to add a little bit of zing into your garden. <laughs> 